everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. It's June, so that means it's time for another addition to our calendar blanket. We're outside enjoying the sunshine today because sunshine is the theme of this month's square. <laughs> We've got a big smiling sunshine square for you this month and I am absolutely delighted with it. It's sort of our signature thing, a big smiling sun. <laughs> anyway, two things to remember. Whatever yarn you've been using thus far in all your calendar blanket squares, if it's worsted weight acrylic, stick with worsted weight acrylic, and that's what I'm using. And you want the same border color for your border that you've been using for all your other squares so that you've got unification when we put the whole thing together. But that's all I'm going to say about our smiling sun. Let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, head on into the craft table, and we'll stitch up the June square together. In order to make our sunshine square, I'm using acrylic worsted weight yarn. You're going to need about 30 grams each of the bright yellow and the sky blue, and about 10 grams of your border color. For me, that's white. You also need very small amounts of light pink for her cheeks, a little bit of black for her eyes, and a little bit of darker pink or red for the little smiling mouth. So worsted weight size four acrylic yarn in those colors. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and we're using a 5.5 millimeter hook or an I-9. And once you've got that together, we can get started. We're going to begin with our bright yellow yarn, and we're going to start with a cinch circle. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, chain two more, that's three chains, and that three chains counts as a double crochet. You're going to work 11 double crochets into your cinch circle. So at the end of row one, including your chain three, you'll have 12 double crochets. Once you've worked your 11 double crochets into the circle, including your chain three, you'll have 12. Cinch your circle shut. <laughs> And you can join to the top of that chain three to finish the row. That's row one. Row two, we're going to double up our stitch count. So we're going to chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitch as joining. That counts as two double crochet for now, but we are going to use my little cheat technique when we get round to the end. Work two, double crochet into every stitch. You'll have 24 stitches at the end of row two, and I'll show you that little cheat when we get there. At the end of row two, you'll have 24 stitches, and now for that little cheat, we're going to double crochet into the false stitch, or that stitch that sits at the very base of the chain three. This isn't going to change your stitch count, so you're only gonna double crochet into that once. And then you're going to skip over top of your chain three and slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet. That closes the gap and it maintains the same stitch count. So that's row two. Row three, chain three to begin. Double crochet into the same stitches joining. We're also going to use the cheat technique at the end of this row as well, but for now that counts as two. Work a double crochet into the next stitch and repeat. Two double crochet into the next stitch. Double crochet into the next stitch. At the end of this row, you'll have 36 stitches. That's 36 stitches at the end of row three. Work that last cheat double crochet into the false stitch. Skip over top of your chain three join to the top of the first real double crochet, and there's your solid circle. One more row of this yellow, chain three to begin, double crochet into the same stitch as joining or as the chain three. That counts as two for now. Double crochet once into each of the next two stitches, and that's the pattern. Two double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet into each of the next two. And at the end of row four, you'll have 48 stitches. 
That's 48 stitches at the end of row 4. Work that last little cheat stitch into the false stitch. Skip over your chain 3 and join to the top of your double crochet. Now we're going to do something kind of nifty. We're going to pull up on that loop. We're going to leave off the yellow, but we're not snipping our yarn. We are now changing to blue, but we're going to leave the yellow there because we're going to come back to it later for the solar flares. So grab your blue yarn. You're going to begin with a slip knot. So make sure that moves around comfortably on your hook. Pick up your big sunny circle and you can just Ignore your yarn. So ignore your hook, ignore your yarn, ignore your big loop here. Just pretend the yellow doesn't exist. <laughs> Into that same stitch that you joined in, you're going to attach your blue yarn with a slip stitch to the back loop only. So in this row, for the whole row, we are working the back loops only. And the back loop is the loop furthest from you. So you see that's the whole stitch you want to use the back loop. So take a second and join your blue yarn with a slip stitch to the back loop only of that joining thing right there. Chain 3 to begin. This is a regular increase row. So you're going to double crochet into the same stitch, in this case the back loop only, as you joined. That counts as 2 for now, but we're going to use that little cheat when we get around to the other side. You're going to work a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And I'm just working over my little short tail. But you'll notice that I'm only working my stitches into the back loop only. So this leaves the front loops open and available because we're going to end up using them later. So that's your pattern. Two double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into each of the next three. Repeat all the way around. Be sure you only use the back loops of this stitch, all the stitches in this row, because you want to make sure you leave your front stitches open and available for work later. And once you're finished row 5, you'll have 60 stitches. At the end of row 5, you'll have 60 stitches in your nice new blue color. And this is how we're going to close up this row. So here's your big yellow loop pulled to the front. There's your false stitch that your loop's coming out of. We're going to use that. But first, and this is very important, make sure you pull the yellow working thread to the front because you want it to be there for use later. So pull it to the front. And then work a double crochet into that false stitch, but use the top loop only. and then skip over your chain three and join to the top of your real double crochet. So what you should have is 60 stitches for row five in blue. They're all worked into the back loops only. That leaves the front loops of all of the rows stitches. See those here, the front loops? That leaves them available because that's what we're going to use when we go back to working our yellow yarn later. But now we're back to normalcy. <laughs> we're going to do another row of increase. This is row six. We're going to chain three to begin. You can use the whole stitch this time. Double crochet into the same stitch as the chain three or the joining. And double crochet into each of the next four. You can use the whole stitch now. We don't need to use front loops or back loops. So we're right back to normal crochet. And that's your pattern. Two double crochet into the first set, the first stitch of the set. Double crochet into the next four stitches. So two, one, 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 one. Repeat that all the way around and you'll have 72 stitches at the end of row six. At the end of row six, we've got 72 stitches. We're gonna use that little cheat once more. So double crochet into the bottom of the chain three or that false stitch there. Skip over the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the real double crochet. 72 stitches. We are now going to turn our circle into a square. That slip stitch that we joined the previous row with counts for this row as a slip stitch. So we're not gonna chain, we're gonna work directly into the next stitch and here's the pattern. 
single crochet into each of the next two stitches, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and treble crochet into each of the next two stitches. Remember that's two wraps around your hook to begin with. And then you're working three sets of loops. Chain two, this creates a corner space. And now we're going to work it in reverse. So two treble crochets into each of the next two stitches. I should say one treble crochet <laughs> into each of the next two stitches. So only one stitch per stitch here. And then double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And now we slip stitch. We slip stitch across the next two stitches. Remember not to make them too tight. And then we begin all over again. Single, single, half, half, double, double, treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble, double, double, half, half, single, single, slip, slip. You're going to repeat that all the way around. You're going to have four chain two corners and you're going to have 72 regular stitches. And that includes your slip stitches. And I will see you at the end of this row. Our last stitch in row seven will be a slip stitch. And that butts up right against the slip stitch that we joined our previous row with and which counts as a slip stitch for this row. So there you go, 72 stitches and four chain two corner spaces. That was row seven. Now we're going to chain three. For row eight and row nine, they are both the same. You're going to double crochet in every stitch all the way around. That first one's a bit tight because it was a slip stitch. So double crochet in every single stitch. And when you get to the corners, I'll show you what to do. So if you're working a double crochet into every single stitch across row eight, when you get to a corner space, you're going to work two double crochets. Chain two and two more double crochets all into that same space. And remember, when you start your next row, you might want to pull back on those corner stitches to reveal the actual stitch of the first stitch you're going to work. You don't want to skip this because it'll throw off your stitch count. You're going to have 22 stitches across each side. So that doesn't include the chains in the corner, just actual double crochets. So go ahead and double crochet in every single stitch work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in every corner space, and I'll see you at the end of row eight. We're at the end of row eight. You should have 22 stitches across each side with four chain two corners. We're not using our false stitch. We are going to join to the top of our chain three, so the chain three actually counts as a double crochet in this row. And in total, you'll have 88 double crochets and four chain two spaces. Chain three to begin row nine, and row nine is a repeat of row eight. You're going to double crochet into every single stitch. You're going to work two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in every single corner, the corner space. <laughs> And at the end of this row, you'll have 104 double crochets, including your chain three and four chain two spaces. And I'll see you at the end of row nine. At the end of row nine, you'll have 104 double crochets, including your chain three. We're not going to use the false stitch, but we are going to join to the top of our chain three. 
and you can fasten off your blue because that is the that's the end of the blue. 104 stitches, four chain two corners at the end of row nine. We've got one more row to finish off our square. So row 10, we're going to our border color now. For me, that's white. You want to begin with a slip knot. Pick up your square and grab a corner. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch in the corner space. And we're working a standard granny shell border pattern. So we're going to chain three to begin. This chain three counts as a double crochet and the first double crochet of our first shell. We're going to work two more double crochets into the same space. That counts as three double crochets and that equals one shell. Chain two and work another shell into the same corner and that is a granny shell corner. Shell, chain two, shell. So every shell has three double crochets in it. Chain one for a spacer because you want one chain spacers between all of your shells across the side of your squares. Skip three stitches, find the fourth, and work a shell into it, or three double crochets. Chain one for your spacer, skip three more stitches, find the fourth, and work a double crochet, three double crochets into it, one shell. You're going to repeat that, shell, chain one, skip three stitches, shell, chain one, skip three stitches, all the way across. You'll have two stitches left to skip when you get to the end, but you should have six single shells running across the side. When you get to your next corner, work shell, chain two, shell. Chain one for your spacer and repeat. Skip three stitches, work a shell. Skip three stitches, work a shell. Don't forget your chain one spacers. You'll have shell, chain two shell in every corner and six single shells with chain one spacers along each side. And I'll see you at the end of this row. At the end of row 10, don't forget to chain your last one for a spacer. You'll have two stitches to skip and you can join to the top of the chain three you began the row with. Slip stitch and fasten off. Take a moment to <laughs> weave in all of your little short ends. And then we'll get back to our yellow yarn. It's time for us to go back and build our sun flares now. We're going to have eight of these little triangles all worked around the inner circle. So grab your hook, pick up your square, and you're going to put that big loop of yellow back on your hook. Now, we are not going to use this stitch. So see where we've joined here? We're going to work our first stitch into this next stitch. So we're going to chain one and we're going to half double crochet into the first loop next to the joining. Every other sun flare is going to start in the same stitch that you chained one out of. So the only exception to this rule is this little place where we joined because our last little stitch is going to be worked here and we want everything to kind of join together nicely. So chain one out of the join, but work your first half double crochet into the loop right next to that. And that is why we wanted to leave these loops because now we have something to work in. It helps if you bend your square a little bit so that you can kind of have that loop pop up a little bit. So you can bend your square and have your loops running across the top of your edge. So that's your first half double crochet. Half double crochet into each of the next five. You'll have six half double crochets across the first row of your first sun flare. That's the first row of your first sun flare. You have six half double crochets. You're going to ignore this little join bit here. So six half double crochets, chain one, turn your work. We're going to work backwards now. We're going to half double crochet the first two stitches together. So I like to wrap my yarn, pick up a loop, and then pick up a loop in the next one. No extra wrapping. Wrap your yarn, pull back through all four stitches and that's half double crochet two together. Half double crochet into each of the next two stitches.
and half double crochet your last two stitches together. So wrap, pick up a loop, and that second loop is always just a little down the side, but it's still there. And that's half double crochet, two together. You'll have four stitches at the end of row two. Chain one, turn your work again. You're going to half double crochet twice. So half double crochet the first two and the last two stitches together of this little row three. And that's two stitches left. One, two. Chain one, turn your work again and half double crochet the last two stitches together. There we go. That's down to one stitch. Chain one. Turn your work. It's very important that you're looking at the right side of your square for this. And now we're going to slip stitch all the way down the edge of our sun flare. The exact number of stitches does not matter. What you want to achieve is a nice, straight, flat edge. So you can just work a slip stitch into any little piece along the edge of your sun flare, keeping, keeping mindful that you want your stitches to lay flat. You don't want your flare to curl. So you can work as many as you need down the side of your sun flare to achieve that. The last slip stitch for your sun flare should be back into the same loop that you worked the last stitch, the last half double crochet of your first row. So just work a final slip stitch into that little loop that should already be pulled up for you. And then you can start the next flare. You're going to slip stitch into the next loop along your sun, chain one, and you're going to half double crochet into the same stitch that you just chained one out of. So it should be lifted for you. Work a half double crochet into it, and then half double crochet into each of the next five. And that is the pattern. You have six half double crochet in your first row, chain one, turn, half double crochet two together, half double crochet, half double crochet, half double crochet two together, that's four for your second row, chain one, turn, half double crochet twice, that'll give you two stitches, chain one, turn, half double crochet two together for your last two stitches, that'll give you one stitch, chain one, turn, you'll be looking at the front of your square, slip stitch all the way down the side of your flare, Make sure your last slip stitch is into the same loop. So anchor it in that loop, slip stitch into the next loop, chain one, half double crochet into it, and begin again. Half double crochet into the next five, chain one, turn, and so on. You will have eight sun flares at the end of this sun flare row. Once you're finished your row of sun flares, you should have eight. Your last slip stitch will have been worked into the same loop that your sixth half double crochet was worked into. You can finish by slip stitching into the false stitch right next to the join. And then you want to leave yourself at least 30 inches or 75 centimeters of yarn. So a nice long tail because you're going to use that to sew your sun flares down to your square. Before we add our face, we're going to sew down our sun flares. So you want to grab your yarn needle and thread up that long tail you left. And you can flatten your square by pulling out the corners and using the heat of your hand to just sort of flatten things out. You can flatten your flares down on top of your square in sort of the same way. And then we're going to sew them down by using that little method I like to use of picking up a stitch across the top, so a top loop of one of the square stitches, 
and then a piece of the side of the sun flare. And pick up another piece of a stitch and then a piece of the side of the sun flare. And you're going to work this all the way up and all the way down all of your flares. Nothing is going to show through to the back and I'll show you the finished one here. So all of the flares are sewn down along the edges right to the top all the way down up down up down and nothing shows through to the back because we've used the top facing loops of the stitches on our square. So you want to go ahead, sew down all of your flares, stop every once in a while to lay it flat and make sure all of your flares aren't buckling, that they lie nice and flat across your square. And I'll see you when you're finished. Once you've sewn down all your flares, you can make yourself a very small knot at the side. And this is just to sort of secure, secure your yarn from going anywhere. And then you can weave it through back and forth across some of the stitches just to make sure that it stays put. Remember to always skip over the last place you brought your yarn out of so that you're not accidentally pulling it back out. Do this a couple times, back and forth and back and forth, and then you can trim any excess. Now we're going to move on to the face. We're going to begin with the cheeks, then make her eyes, and then her cute little mouth. So you want to grab your light pink yarn. We're going to make two of these. You're going to begin with a cinch circle. Chain an extra chain after your securing chain so that you have two chains. This is the height of a half double crochet, but we're not going to treat it as a half double crochet. You're going to work eight half double crochets into your cinch circle, skip over your chain two, and join with a slip stitch to the top of your first real half double crochet. Once you've made eight half double crochets into your cinch circle, cinch it shut, skip over your chain two and join to the first half double crochet you made. We're not counting the chain twos. Slip stitch to join and fasten off leaving a longish tail because this is what you're going to sew your little cheek to the sun with. And then you can weave your short tail in around the back so that it doesn't show through to the front. Weave it around a couple times and then trim off any excess. So you need two cheeks. For the eyes, we're going to make a cinch circle using our black yarn. And we're going to use single crochet. So you only need your one chain out of your circle. Work four single crochets into your cinch circle. Once you have four single crochets, cinch your circle shut, join to the first single crochet you made with a slip stitch, and like the cheeks, fasten off, leave a longish tail for sewing, weave in the short tail across the back, and then grab a little bit of white yarn. We're going to add the glimmers. You need very, very little white yarn in your yarn needle. You're going to bring it through the very center of your eye from the back to the front. Leave a little tail along the back. And then you're going to bring it down through the top of one stitch, back up through the same center that you brought it out from originally. And then through the top of the stitch next to it. Doesn't matter, either side is fine because what you want is a little V, and that creates a glimmer. Then you can knot your two tails together across the back and trim off any excess. Um, you don't need to weave anything in here. So nice tight little knot. Trim off the excess, and when you're sewing down your eye, 
you can just keep any little tiny bits of threads that might want to show through tucked underneath the eye. And you want to do that twice, one for each eye. We've got one last facial, facial feature to make, and that's the mouth. And the mouth is made using your dark pink or your red, whichever color you want. And it's exactly the same as the eyes. So we're going to make a cinch circle, chain one to secure it, and work four single crochets into the cinch circle. Cinch it shut when you're finished. Join to the top of the first single crochet you made and fasten off. You want to leave a little extra tail this time, so a much, as much as you need to sew plus a little bit extra. Because we're going to do a little extra embroidery with it when we're finished. Fasten off and weave that short tail in around the back, trim any excess. We're going to begin by arranging our cheeks on our sun. Now you can put them anywhere you like. On my first one, I put them in the lower middle section of the sun. So there's your center, that's your first row. And I have them sort of even with the very center dot, but out towards the edges. So just a bit before where the flares touch, I've got them sort of sitting there. So that's where I'm going to put my cheeks. You can pin them into place if you feel it's necessary, but you can start sewing your cheek into place using the same method we did for the sun flares. So I can keep my thumb on. I'm going to thread up my tail in my yarn needle. And I'm going to use a piece of the stitch of the square and then the whole side of the stitch of my cheek. And if you're doing it like I am, lay it down every once in a while and make sure it's still sitting in the same place. And after you get the first few stitches in, it's probably not going to move. So go ahead and sew down your cheeks. When you're done sewing on your applique, you can make a tiny little knot at the side of your applique piece and then just weave in the tail across or underneath, I should say, across and underneath the stitches in that piece. So weave it around a couple times. Try not to pull anything out of alignment. And once you've woven it back and forth, you can trim any excess that there might be left and your little tail should not go anywhere. Next, you're gonna position your eyes anywhere you like somewhere near the top middle part of your sun. You want to make sure that both of the little V's, the little glimmers, are kind of pointed in the same direction. So it looks something like this. I've put both of my eyes just inside the middle line of my cheek, so they're just to the inside of each cheek, and they're on the other side of, there's my middle, my center, and I've put them just up off middle center, and I've made sure that both my little flecks are pointed in the same direction. So take a moment, line up your eyes, and you can sew them down too. The last thing we're going to do is put on our sunshine's little mouth. So you're going to start by sewing down your smile, sewing down your mouth, somewhere in the middle between your cheeks, and you want to begin with your um, you're sewing yarn either in the top right or the top left hand corner. And the reason for that is that when we're finished sewing all the way around our little circle, we're going to add these cute little bits of embroidery to just make it look like she's smiling a little bit. So you can sew down your smile, your little mouthpiece, somewhere in between your cheeks in the lower middle part of your circle's face or your sun face. Start in either the top right or the top left corner, work all the way around, and then we'll put on a little bit of embroidery at the very end. Once you've finished sewing all the way around your little pink circle, bring your yarn back out to either the top right or left corner, and we're going to make two straight stitches off either side of the corners of our little mouth. So you're going to take your yarn, hop over a couple of stitches towards the cheek, Go back 
by picking up the top loops, because we don't want this to show through to the back, come out the same spot, and don't pull too, too tightly because you don't want to pull those stitches out of alignment. Go back to the same place and then hop over to the left side of your mouth and repeat it on the other side. Once you've got two little stitches on either side of the mouth, which makes it look like it's smiling, if you have enough yarn left, you can knot it, or after you've finished knotting, you can just weave it in, same way we've been doing around the other pieces, by weaving it back and forth and back and forth underneath parts of the stitches. And if you do it back and forth enough times, it should not work its way out. And there we go. That is your sunshine square for June. And that is the June square, a great big smiling ball of sunshine. <laughs> if you'd like a copy of this pattern, we have it available for sale along with all the other square patterns in our Etsy shop. So be sure to check out the description box down below for more information on that. And that is it for this week, everyone. I hope you enjoyed making this along with us and we will see you again very soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until next time, stay safe, stay crafty and have an awesome week. Bye.